Hi, welcome back to the Zero Hours. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be episode two or it could be a quick hitter. I uh, learned a lot just from posting my videos. I posted a trial run and I posted episode one. Uh, kind of explained my situation, what I do, and most of those. I learned a couple things. Number one is you should probably do a video when you're upset about things. Uh, fresh, upset, and uh, also learn that you shouldn't do them when you're tired because it's a lot of repetitive. I ramble and more than usual when I'm tired and uh, pissed off about something or upset about something. So the last one was a little over an hour, also, and it's like I, I don't know that I'm planning to do that, it's just how they've ended up. So I don't know if this will be a full hour rant today or it will be what I'll call a quick hitter. If I call them that, I'll call them quick hitters or whatever. i just name them something. Uh, but I noticed some things, you know, when I look at back, I always listen back to my uh, own ramblings at night when I get home sometimes and uh, see what I did that I think sounds like ridiculous or, you know, I mean, I don't take much... I don't criticize myself or nothing. It's not a show. It's just, I mean, it'd be great if I was on the radio and then I could do it. I'd critique myself and edit it and all that shit. Uh, not what it's about, but uh, I did notice some things uh, when I was talking yesterday or the, about on episode one. And I want to clear it up with this one and uh, I really apologize because I'm not going to do that. It's not an apology, it's a clarification. It's uh so I'm I'm focusing this broadcast on protest. Okay? Um protest. Let's let's just go over from the beginning. I first learned what a protest was uh, probably seven or eight years old. And uh so I'd be like 76, 77 area around there. Um, my mom worked at a company here in town that was on strike. And they were on the picket line and had confrontations with the uh, local police or whatever. I remember it being a big deal with the union and the strike and all that. So I consider a picket line a protest. I don't know if everybody would do that, but uh, it's protesting your work. Saying we, need, we don't have good enough jobs or we don't have good enough pay or... Whatever it is, so I consider it a protest um, now in my older age. So that was my first experience as a kid. And I mean, I seen the, you know, the pictures on the newspaper, water cannons or whatever the hell they used back. I don't remember, but uh, for sure. But I do remember it being like, uh, even as a kid, I was like, wow, that's crazy. You know, where my mom works <laughs> going crazy out there, but. You know, the older you get, you realize that there was protests way before that, of course. And, and you know, we go to, like, uh, the civil rights, all the civil rights movement in the protest and the um, Million Man March or whatever. I mean, I'm not a scholar on civil rights back in the 60s because, you know, I was born in 68. So I do, uh, everybody has a different word for protest. Now, that was a march. It's a, is it a protest? Yes, I think so. Uh, you could even consider like Woodstock a protest. I mean, they, they were peace and love, and and but it was a musical, peaceful protest, and uh, the march was a peaceful protest, from what I understand. And you know, um, a lot of things have been peaceful, even even in today's age. You know, we're having all these uh, issues. I mean, we've had protests on the in in Columbus here in the, in, in the OHIO. You know, we've had uh, protests against the governor, against the uh, COVID stuff. They had it in Michigan where they all drove around their cars around the state house, clogged the traffic. You know, of course, we've had the people stretched out on the highway. Um, we've had the and then we've had the protests that turned to riots. So my thing is, I'd like to know, I mean, if anybody does watch this one, or any of them, but I would like to know what you consider 
a protest to be in your mind. I mean, is it, is it, you, you're peaceful to a certain point and then you have to get violent or is it what my thinking is, is you have a few different groups of people. You have the peaceful people that want to get their name out. They want to get the word out and they have no intentions whatsoever of ever going to the violent side. They just say, you know, I want to be out in public saying I believe this or I, I I want this to stop or I want this to happen or whatever it is. Then you have what I you know, the social media people or the the hidden ones, the silent ones. Myself. I mean I don't go to a lot of rallies. I don't go to the only one I would, you know, even think about going would be like uh save save the children, save our children. I don't know. You know, something like that, because, you know, the pedophilia stuff, just really. That should be the number one issue in the country. I mean, it really should. And, God, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I need to stand up more and say, you know, get rid of all this political shit. We're going to save the kids. I don't care what the left's doing. I don't care what the right's doing. Whoever's president doesn't matter. These kids need saved. And, and, I, sh and I know I should. And that's, you know irritating to me that I, I I can't find a way to focus just on that as far as protesting on s social media or in person or and you know it also aggravates me that oh, we've got the athletes and and everybody else that's been protesting all the the riots and the Black Lives Matter and the shootings and and uh, Antifa and all this stuff everybody that, we can't focus all that on to, to, to these kids. I mean, there's more kids go missing every day. And it's... It's crazy out. You know, it's crazy that, that it's so far down the line of priorities. And I put myself, my dumbass self, in that category too. That's all I should be talking about today is saving these kids. I mean, good Lord. I mean, it's scary to think. I think a lot of people are... And I'm including myself in there i'm not saying you people you people i'm saying i do the same thing i can't possibly fathom that that shit happens i cannot fathom that these kids are going missing and what's happening to them i think there's got to be an exp another explanation they're runaways or there's something else or it's it's got to be a different solution got to be a there's got to be a I'm mean, not a solution but there's got to be a different reason for all these kids going missing it can't be luciferian underground blood drinking pedophilias it can't be it can't be you know and that's my wrong thinking cuz it can be and it may very well be and yeah, I should be protesting that every second of every day. That should be my sole focus. And unfortunately, it can't. It hasn't been. It hasn't been. And and maybe I do need to drop everything political and say, you know, I'm going to go to a Save Our Children campaign that nobody's ever seen, and we're going to get out there and, and and you know they're finding kids left and right now. They found them in Georgia, what, 39 kids in a in a in a house trailer. And right there is a smack in the fucking face. It's wake up that this shit's going on. Wake up. Go get these kids. And that's what we I need to focus on just as much as everybody else does. Protesting that, I don't know how much that does. I mean people should be aware of it. They're aware of it. They just don't want to they don't want to think about it just like me. It's a scary thing to think about. I mean, really. That that goes on around us. Anyway. I mean. I I didn't mean to go off topic. on. We're, going, we're talking about protests. And I'll get. You know, maybe my next. Rant. Brambling will be about Save Our Children. I think it will. Because. Uh, it's eating more and more at me every day. Life's too fucking short, man. I mean, I've had stuff happen in the last, this last year has been, uh, 
very disheartening. You know, it's just very tough to take sometimes. You know, like I said, it's been a bad mental health year for a lot of people. And I'm on the top of the list. I mean, I never thought it would happen to me. Yeah, I was always a carefree guy and uh, whatever, you know. I can't do it anymore. I mean, this is why I do this, uh, to help myself. But anyway, protesting. I want to stay on task this time, I promise. So, we, you know, like I said, my mom's was the first that I got a taste of it. And then I, knew, I learned about Martin Luther King, the march, and, and that civil rights movements back in the day. And then, you you know, you had the gay, the gay pride uh, marches. We've had marches for Trump. We've had marches, marches against Trump. I mean, currently, currently. We've had protests about a lot of things. Now, there's, there's people call a right way to protest and a wrong way to protest. I mean, I just don't see the extremist way burning stuff down, looting it, and rioting being a, a way to protest. I think that just causes more damage and insanity. I mean, I, I get it, you're upset. I say get upset about a lot of things. I just got upset a minute a second ago. You seen it. But if I went out and bur start burning uh, trailers down around here in the name of Save Our Children, is that going to make it better? <laughs> no, it's not going to make it better. Because then I probably took out a, say, a, a kid's home. Just like the Black Lives Matter in Antifa burning shit to the ground is taking somebody's livelihood away from them. And a lot of them, you don't know who they are. They either support your movement, which, you know, that's contradictory. Or, they're, or they are black or a person of color. And you burnt their business down. How in the hell is that helping them? That's not. So, the protesting. Can it all be peaceful? I mean, cry, I wish it would. A perfect world, it would be. But we all know that's not a perfect world. So that got me to thinking about the different kind of protest. And some things I said yesterday, the athletes really pissed me off with this, you know, the Jacob Blake deal. They wait for that to, to, to make a the giant move. I mean, it, they, they could have done it with, with George. They could have done it with Richard. They could have... I think what irritated me was they waited for this. And this was blatantly, in my mind, justified. So, anyway. So I go back to thinking about all the protests in sports. You know, the... Started, you know, when, when Tebow was kneeling and for his religion and then people got on him about that. That wasn't a protest for him. That was more like a declaration. This is what I am. I'm going to get down on my knee to the God and I'm going to pray. And, and, and this uh, I'm a Christian man, play sports, God above all. T you know, I didn't have a problem with Tim Tebow kneeling. Then Kaepernick came along, in football anyway. Kaepernick came along and did it. And I'll be the first to admit, I was pissed off about that. Just because of the timing. I mean, to do it during the anthem was what got me. And I've been mad about it for, you know, mad about it for a long time. You know, the hell with Kaepernick, blah, blah, blah. And I think about now. So LeBron James does basically the same crap. He wears the shirts he on Twitter and you know telling people you know, he just run. I mean he says a lot of things. I can't even keep up with everything LeBron says. Basically it's you know we're gonna change this and and this and that and he he goes about it to me sometimes. I mean it's his right to say whatever and. I just, I don't agree with how he says it sometimes. It's like he's against all white people. He lumps everybody in. Just like they don't want us to do with black people. And I don't. And they shouldn't either. But I started thinking about that. 
more and more yesterday after I watched the video last night. And I'm like, okay. And, and one part of it, I said, you know, it, it's okay to speak your mind. It's okay to protest in any forum you can, peacefully. So I admit some hypocrisy co contradiction. My, I contradicted myself a little bit. So I'm trying to explain that. And not, not explain it away because I think, you know, I might have made a misstatement. I'm not going to say, hey. But I even went deeper than that when I was thinking. I, I was up late, late last night thinking about this stuff. And, and uh, you know, Kaepernick did what he did. The timing was bad. Um, I mean, I think I would have done it a different way. But I'm not Colin Kaepernick. I'm not the other guys that followed suit on him. I'm not even LeBron James. I think the biggest difference between LeBron James and Colin Kaepernick, and the reason LeBron doesn't get the heat, maybe that Colin does, because LeBron's a pretty good basketball player. Colin wasn't a great, he's a decent quarterback. Not, he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't like, it's like a low level guy talking out, and you're like, who the hell is this guy? For me, it was NASCAR, Bubba Wallace. You know, it's a flag thing. I didn't know who the dude was. And you can get it you can get all the flags banned. And that's I mean that was his way of protesting it was saying I don't feel I feel disrespected by all these flags and blah blah blah. It's heritage not hate for me and it might be hate not heritage for him. I mean but you know, I didn't know who he was, so I really didn't put enough stock in him and what he's saying and and it made him more of a household name but at the same time, another guy who I couldn't even tell you his name right now, I'd have to look it up, quit the sport of NASCAR because he was a pissed off that they banned the flags. But, you know, he wasn't as highly touted, I mean, I guess in the NASCAR world, as Bubba Wallace. He didn't get hardly, I mean, he got like one day on Sports Center and they like got laughed him off and said, you know, he's rebelling against the rebellion. And he gets slapped back into the reality. It's like, well, you quit your job for nothing because none of these people give a shit. And it's like, they're all worried about making the statement against racism and all this stuff. Even if you think it's not racist, they don't care what you think. You're a low-level douchebag. And I don't know. I don't even remember. Like I said, I don't even remember the guy's name. And, uh. But he made a stand. He stood up for what he believed in, and he did it. And I'm like, hey, I might not remember your name, dude, but I got respect for you because you got to do what you got to do. So my contradiction or my hypocrisy on that was to say they could do whatever they want in any forum they want. It was a hypocrisy to an extent because, listen, there's plenty of things I'm upset about in the world. There's plenty of things that my workplace supports that I do not. I, I don't fall in line with the, what they think, okay? As far as social politics, po policies and politics, whatever. I don't fall in line with them. And so I could go to work and say, I'm postponing my day today. You know, I just don't feel like coming in today because I don't agree with your policies. I'm going to protest them. I'm going to give the Mikey sign for protest. I'm protesting. I'm not going to work today. And, and, and you can't make me use a vacation day. That's my vacation day. I'm just not going to do it. And I'm going to grab everybody that's in my department or in my plant. And we're all going to do it. We're just going to say we're not going to work today. And we could do that. I could do that. I could just not call in, not use vacation, just not show up, say, I'm protesting your politics, your policies. Would I get in trouble for doing that? Well, hell yeah. I mean, you might lose your job over something like that. That's why I don't speak my employer's name anymore. Just because I have a different opinion than what they do. 
okay, I, I protest here. I can say I don't agree with my, my workplace, who they support. I don't agree with it at all. I can say it here, and I can do it in this platform. But like an athlete, you're doing it on a national stage. I get it. It's a big stage to be doing it on. But that's your job. I mean, why don't you do it in the off season? Why don't you do it on your days off? Why are you going to take a day off to pro? You, know, you think it's going to be that's going to be a big deal? It's not. It's not. I didn't see. I don't know anybody. Maybe I'm just out of the loop with an NBA and stuff. But I don't know anybody that was hanging on a thread to watch Game Five. In in a shortened season, where your ratings are shit. <laughs> I mean, in baseball, the other day, I think it was the Mets and the Phillies. They decide they're going to go out on the field, line up. You know, there's no fans in the stands, so it's not. If there was fans in the stands, they wouldn't have done it because it would have been madhouse because I paid to see a baseball game and you screwed me. Yeah, uh, when it comes to money, people get real pissy. So they go out and they uh, line up. And they're going to have a moment of silence for Mr. Blake. Okay, whatever. It's your choice to do whoever you choose, I guess, to to back and uh, ride on. So, But they do that. They get a moment of silence. They're out there standing. And then they leave the field. <laughs> They're not going to play because Jacob Blake got shot. To me. To me. That protest is absolutely meaningless. Because number one, I don't agree with it being a. I don't. I don't want the martyr tag on him. Number two, why did you waste the time? I mean, it's almost like you're showboating. You come out there, everybody knows you could have just said, "We're not going to play the game tonight because, you know, Jacob Blake. We, none of us, all however many players are on a team in baseball, all 62 of you, whatever, on both sides, all the management." All this stuff, we're all in agreement that we're not going to play because of this. And that's another thing that bothered me because I know there's plenty of people on these teams that are like, this is horse shit. Just let me play, let me play baseball. It's my job. I want to play. But if I say that, I'm chastised out. You know, some of them have been getting by with being able to stand up and they say because their dad's a police officer or dad was in the military. Um... And they haven't gotten much backlash about that. So I'm glad of that. But on the other hand, you know, you got Drew Brees who spoke spoke out about the, the anthem thing with the, you know, honoring the military. He, he thinks the anthem was honoring the military time. And he wasn't really on board with the protesting during the anthem, blah, blah. He got bashed. His own players, his own teammates were bashing him. You said the wrong thing, Drew. You know, you're my boy, but you said the wrong thing. So what's Drew Brees do? He backtracks and apologizes. Zero, Drew. You should have the zero mentality, man. You said what you said because you believed in it. You said what you said. Stand by it. Yeah, I understand not wanting to go to work with a bunch of hostile people that are against you, but at the same time, fuck them, man. Your opinion's your opinion. So why did you kowtow to this bullshit? To, to make peace? What are they going to do, beat you up in the locker room? I mean, that's the mentality of this shit. If you don't say what I say... You know, you're you're going to get your ass kicked. You don't believe what I believe. It's the same as what happened in the outdoor areas the other day. The outdoor uh, cafes or restaurants, whatever it was, a, a sports bar, whatever it was. I don't know. There's a couple different videos and a couple different times where the, the Black Lives Matter were coming up. It said, do this. Walking up to people, do this, support, support us, support us. And the majority of them are like scared to death. Oh, okay, okay. Whether or not they believe it, I don't know. But it's like maybe some of them are die hard Black Lives Matter. 
But there's people that sat there and didn't raise their arms. They got their ass chewed. People up in their face. You better do this. You better do that. You better raise that hand. You better raise that hand. And the one girl was sitting there and she leaned back on her chair. She's like, nah, not today. And come to find out, that girl actually was, had been marching with Black Lives Matter. So she's on their team. But she didn't feel the need to be told she has to put her arm up to prove that she's a supporter of Black Lives Matter. Because you don't. You don't have to do that in a protest. You don't have to protest nothing. You can believe anything you want. You can be a, a grand uh, supporter of the grandmaster of the KKK. But if the KKK walks up to you and says, you better get your hand up, boy. You better do the Heil Hitler shit. You better get a swastika tattoo. And you say, fuck, I ain't doing that. I can believe what I want to believe. You're not going to tell me what I have to do to protest. Protest any way the fuck I want. Same with Black Lives Matter. You can support Black Lives Matter if you want. I don't, personally, the movement. The movement, I think, is, is, is generated by evil people. And they're, want, they're going way overboard with some of the, you know, the reparations, and they want to walk into people's houses and take them over. Do you owe us this house? I don't know you shit. I don't know you a fucking thing, man. I didn't, I never had a gun to your head and told you to pick cotton in Alabama. I didn't do any of that shit. I didn't do nothing racist. I've never done a racist thing. I've never had the power to do it. I wouldn't do it because, once again, I'm not a racist. But, but even still, so now the Black Lives Matter want me to pay for the sins of any white man in the past, 250 years ago. I mean, my family was dirt poor in Kentucky. We didn't own any fucking body. We might have been owned, but we didn't own anybody. I mean, my dad's side, he taught, told me how uh, dad worked in the, in the coal mines, and they lived in a coal mine camp in the, Kentucky that's no longer even there. He tried to take me to his childhood home. That fucker was gone. I mean, this is Appalachia you're talking about, where they struggled to survive down there. And as a kid, I remember going to my grandma's in the log cabin, and having her do a ringer wash. This is in the 70s. Ringer washers, man. Not even electric. Going to the outhouse to go to the shitter. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was poor. We were poor down there. I mean, I, I never grew up in that. I mean, that was visiting my grandma. But, no, I had electric my whole life. You know, I had running water. I've been blessed. I ain't gonna lie. But I don't know a black man in... in uh, that I know that lived without electricity with dirt floors and a hut, you know, so we've all had the same opportunity. It's America, but I'd be damned if you're going to protest in my face. Tell me I have to agree with your protest. Even if I agree with what you're saying to me, why in the hell should I have to show it just like you? That's like going to church. You could be into the church into what the preacher's saying, and you got this stuff. The, the people with their hand. That's how they express themselves, the hand. Somebody's nudging me next to say, raise your hand. You got to raise your hand. I ain't doing that. That's not how I express that I'm enjoying the service or whatever. It would be, I'm sitting there taking it in, thinking, okay, yeah, this is good. I don't feel the need to raise my hand. It's at a rock concert. If you don't want to do that in the air when you're jamming, then don't. But, I mean, it's, it's the same thing with protest. If you don't want to protest a certain way, then you don't have to. And the only problem I have with any protest is the extremist. And, and I get back to Colin Kaepernick. Was I wrong to be mad at Colin Kaepernick? I'm not. I was wrong to be mad that he protested. And I don't think in my back of my mind, I was mad that he protested. I think... The two things that bothered me was it was the timing during the anthem, which set me off. I mean, the anthem's always been a kind of a sacred thing to me. You know, I'm one of those weirdos that if I'm watching a game in my house, I'll take my hat off. 
and and wait till the anthem's over to put it back on. That's just, you know, there's been times where I've stood up in, in the house. If I'm at a sports bar, I'll take my hat off. If I'm at a, a high school football game, it's my respect time for the country. It's not respect for the politicians. It's not respect for the policies. It's respect for the land of opportunity that I get to live in every day. The free land. You know, land of the free, home of the brave. That shit resonates. We're lucky. And then you get the counter ones that say, well, we're not so lucky. We've been oppressed and we're... And I'm not saying that it's not 100% that it does not happen anywhere. But there's a lot of people that get oppressed. And I'm not making any com I'm not making any kind of comparison here cuz it's two different things. I get it. But you're a black man and you're and you're you're judged for the color of your skin. Well, I'm a big man, a fat guy, to be honest. I'm a fat guy. I get you know, judged every day. Oh, he must be lazy. He must eat all fucking day long. He must, you know, he must just sit around and, and eat junk all day and not do a damn thing. He's probably on welfare, probably on disability. He's probably, you know, yada, yada, yada. No, motherfucker, I work every day. Every day I'm told to work, I've been there. For 35 years I've worked. Even to the lowest points, the lowest shitty job I worked. The last 18 years I've been pretty fortunate. I've had a decent job. And I worked my way up. To be a, a, you know, up the next level. And I'm some, if any of my coworkers watch this, they might laugh at this and think it's crazy. But I think I'm really good, real, really, really, really fucking good at my job. I'm proud of myself. I think I do great. It's not an easy job. It's a thankless job. It's not a physical job like it used to be when I was on the floor, but. It's a mental fucking thing. And it's it's very, you got to be organized. And you got to know what to do in a split second. And you got to jump in and help when you have to. I do all those things. You know, I put 14, 15, 16,000 steps a day walking in there with 20-pound boots on, on concrete. To where I've crashed my own body out even worse. Yeah, a lot of it might be my weight help, you know, anyway. I'm getting off topic again. I'm trying not to do that. What I'm getting to with the protesting is there's good ways to do it and there's bad ways to do it. I mean, in my way, as I think in my good is your good is not going to work because if you're an extremist and you think, well, talking doesn't, and you're getting it from your politicians, Maxine Waters or whatever her name is, you're getting it from people like that they are saying, the time for talking's over. We got to go in. We got to get, we got to show them we, we mean business and ripping the country apart doing that. I mean, we've had peaceful protests forever and ever, but you start doing riots, all this crazy shit. I mean, I, I even get upset like when a sports team would win the championship. They would burn their shit down around the city. Why is that celebrating? We're not even talking protesting. We're talking celebrating. We won. Let's burn a couch on the fucking middle of the street. What? <laughs> I mean, come on. Why is property destruction and violence so appealing to everybody? Christ, I don't get it, man. I, I mean, I just... It blows my mind to the extreme that this is where we're at. With everything got to be... Every reaction's got to be violent. The only thing that's not been violent, as far as protesting goes, the only thing that's been protested that I have seen that's not been violent in some way is Save Our Children, which should be the one that we're pissed off about. I mean, yeah, the, the pride parades, they're usually peaceful. But you'll get some motherfuckers in there that got a problem with gay, got a problem with, you know, all this LBG they got a problem with it, so they want to go counter-protest. That's fine you want to counter-protest, but do it peacefully. Don't get up in their face, don't touch them. And I'm not one of these, oh, my safe space. 
Because, you know, if it comes down to it and uh, you got a line to cross, you cross that line, then I guess I'm, I'm as bad as you. I'm violent all of a sudden. I've said it before. I've made it known to my wife and everybody else that drives in the car with me. I pull up to a line and there's people blocking the road. I'm in my vehicle. I'll stop. I'll wait them out. The minute they, they, they touch the vehicle, I'm going to have a problem. And it's not because I'm so worried about my precious vehicle. It's like now you're getting, in the, you're, you're getting over the line. If you start beating on my car or telling me to get out of the car or you're going to kick my ass, that fucking pedal, pedal on the right is going to the floor. And if you're in the front of me, you're hurt or dead. And guess what? Zero guilt. Zero. And if I had to spend the rest of my life in jail for running somebody over, which would be complete bullshit, because my life's in jeopardy at that point, you're beating on my window telling me you're going to kick my ass. I'm going to put the pedals going to the floor. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> Not. And I don't want it to get that. I mean, I don't worry about that a whole lot here in Sydney, you know, Ohio. I don't, I don't worry about protest getting out of control. But then again, how do you know it won't? I mean, it's a small town everywhere. I don't know how big of a town Kenosha was. I, I really don't know. But there was you know, uh, Ferguson years ago. That was Missouri, but it was a suburb. So, I mean, it's like, these aren't like the big Portlands and Seattles anymore. It's, and they, and the, and the Antifa saying, we're bringing it to the rural, rural communities. We're bringing it in. That would be a big mistake. I mean, and some of them out in Colorado, they tried that in Colorado. It didn't work. I mean, they were met with opposition. And... It didn't end, didn't end the greatest for Antifa. And that's sad. I mean, it's sad that Antifa would, would go there. to. But people are only going to take so much. So protesting. If you want to leave comment, what do you think is acceptable? What do you think is not? I think it's acceptable to say, get on Twitter and say whatever you want and Facebook and can't hardly do that anymore. I mean, it's being censored so much, but I mean, I would say, you know, that, that that's one way to do it. Standing on the, so, the street with signs, there's another way to do it. Uh, getting to, Having to get together and uh, marching about it or speeches about it, it's all good. Rolling in with uh, your face mask on with guns and bats and everything else. To try to push, to tell me I have to believe a certain way. Protesting what I believe, that's wrong to me. To me. Now, I can't speak for everybody. I try not to. I'm just, you know, like I said, I'm just a Midwestern guy. and Conservative. Yeah, but... Uh, don't mean that I don't have things I want to protest. And, and I protest by doing the Facebook thing. Or parlor or whatever. I feel like getting on and protesting social media wise. I guess what I'm doing here is kind of a protest. I mean, it, it's my personal protest. I'm not with anybody else. I'm by myself. And, you know, I'm going to hear it all at some point. I'm an asshole. I'm a douche. I'm a fucking right wing extremist. I'm a conspiracy theorist. And it's like. I don't think I'm any of those, but okay. You know, I'm not going to debate you. You can protest me. I can protest you. We can protest the cause. We can protest the same cause. You know, the Save Our Children might bring people together. Because I don't think anybody on the right or the left, or, or black or white, or Asian, or Native American, or whatever you are, none of us want to see our kids get taken. I mean, I think we're all in agreement, except the sick bastards out there doing it, that child trafficking and is bad. <laughs> I mean, it's not even bad. It's not even a joking matter. I mean, it's 
fucking disgusting and not enough being done about it. And I, I like, I'm just one guy here in, in a small town doing these ridiculous videos. My voice is not going to reach millions of people, but athletes would, rock stars would. So why can't we take the focus off of a guy getting shot by a policeman that, you know, justified to me? But even if it was, I mean, it's bad. I mean, I understand you're standing up for what you think, and I'm not even trying to slight it anymore. I was. I was bashing the hell out of people for, for, kick, you know, keep keeping this Black Lives Matter movement going because I'm not a fan of the movement. I'm about black lives, though. I'm about human life. But I'm not going to sit here and say all lives matter because I know what you're saying. I get the meaning behind all lives matter. can't matter until black lives matter. I get what you're saying that because you come out with something, we shouldn't have to have to trumpet and say, well, no, you can't say that. All lives matter. You're segregating yourself. And I used to think that way. And, and, and some people probably do. And I, most people probably still do. But I'm saying is, it, is if, if your black lives matter, and for me, white lives matter, or all lives matter, or Asian lives matter, whatever you want to say, but the children and all that should matter the most. Because we are adults that have our opinions, and, and look what we've done <laughs> to the country. Because we're so f petty, and, and we're so worried about an agenda, and being right, while our kids are missing. So, I mean, this was meant for a protest vlog here. And if it turns into a Save Our Children vlog, so be it. I'll be okay with that. That will be my next issue. Um, it should have been my first one. I get it. That's why I say you don't do videos when you're pissed. Because the first one I was going to do was Save Our Children. And uh, now I'm doing this one in response to the first one that I did when I should not have. I mean, I was pissed. And I still stand by the first one. I'll stand by everything I say. Am I going to be hip, hip, hypocritical in some senses? Probably. And if people call me out on that, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Just like I took myself to task last night. And said, how can I say to the athletes, do it in any forum you want, but have a problem with them doing it in their respective forum? That's why I had to explain that if they do it at the press conference, I don't care. Even LeBron James with his track, I don't don't like how he comes across. He doesn't like how, a lot of people don't like how Donald Trump comes across on Twitter either. So it's a it's a wash there. He can say it however he wants. He can say fuck this man. It's time for change now like he did. I get you. You want change and you're standing up for the, for the your race. I can't bash you for that. I did, but I bashed you because you think taking a day off of a, of a basketball game is going to make a difference? All that did was piss more people off. And like, who are these self-righteous? This is my opinion, like I said. More self-righteous people taking time off. And Kaepernick, back when he did his thing. Like I said, I thought it was the wrong time to do it. He would have done it before or after. I got no problem. He wants to do it all game. I just didn't like it during the anthem. That was my personal reason for not liking what Kaepernick did. I don't know what everybody else's was. You know, he also had, you know, a pretty good upbringing. So if he was talking about only police brutality, police brutality, a big umbrella, that's okay. But when he started talking about oppression for his people and this and that, you've never experienced it. I mean, in my mind, how could you experience it? You were... Raised in a good family, a rich family or whatever. You went to college, probably for free, play football. You're making millions and millions of dollars a year to play football in the NFL. So you've had that, you were a good football player, but that, you'd be a good football player in Venezuela or Argentina or 
and see where that gets you. You're not going to get nothing because that sports don't mean nothing down there. I mean, you'd have to be a, a soccer messiah to, in, in places like that. A football player, because it was America, we're football players here. So if you wouldn't have been any good at football or you would have got a massive MCL, ACL tear your senior year of college or high school, I'll just say high school, and you couldn't play football anymore, what would you have done? I mean, you wouldn't be making millions of dollars, I wouldn't think. And maybe you would have ended up in a squalor where you needed to, you know, have a job and you could have felt oppressed. I think, and that was what got me, was wearing the Castro shirts and the Venezuelan guy shirts. To the, it's like, okay, what are, you, what are you trying to say here? That you want to be like them or that you think America's that? I mean, I never got a clear message from him on that. But anyway, I'm... Like I said, I'm, I'm not good at keeping on topic. I mean, I'm not. I'll admit that. I got to work on it. But protesting wise, it's hard for me to say, but it's like, okay, he did what he did. I didn't agree with it. But the banning from the league, yeah, probably not. But in reality, if he was that good of a football player, he would have found his way back. And he might. You never know. But, I mean, what did he expect the backlash to be? I mean, uh, protest, you take that chance. It's like, I come out protesting against, if I would say I'm against this and this, that, say, my workplace is for. And I would go post that on their website. Or have go into my job at the at the pre-shift meeting, take a knee in protest of it. I got to expect backlash. And, and you got it. Because not everybody thinks like you. Not everybody thinks like me. I mean, protesting is, is, is a, an American right. I mean, we're allowed to protest. I just think the extreme protesting needs to go away. I know it won't, but because it's the the farther down the line here we get, the worse it's gotten. I mean, even ten years ago, you wouldn't see. I don't think you would see what we ha we have going on here. Every time now, every time that there's a killing, especially in or not even a killing, I want to say somebody dies at the hands of the police. Nobody cares about why. They look at the skin color and go off. I I don't think that's correct. I think that's why we're having so many troubles nowadays. People don't take the time to think about it. And and that's why I'm retracting. I'm, I'm not retracting, but I'm going back and looking at my video and saying, you know, about the, the athletes and trying to clarify that they have the opportunity to say, in a major way. And these guys that tweet and say stuff at post-conference, uh, game conferences, you know what? I might not agree with you, but I don't have a problem with you doing that. It's after the game. If they want to talk to you after a game or before a game and you got everything to say, say it. Protest. Protest away. It's, you know, it's a beautiful thing to have the First Amendment in this country. You know, just, and it's, it's just some, some people say, I think he did it at the perfect time. Colin Governor, he did it at the exact time that he needed to do it. And, and in his mind, I'm sure he is. He's standing by it forever. He, he He's never quaffed off of it. Never said, you know, I shouldn't have done it during the anthem. He never said that. Then again, what if the cameras wouldn't have went to the, wouldn't even have went to him during the anthem. What if, what if the national anthem was focused on the flag? Nobody, nobody's looking at anything else. All the cameras are on the flag. Nobody even makes a mention that Colin Kaepernick and I forget who number thirty-five was. He was next to him. 
at the second time, I think. But they, 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 you know, they seen it, and then all of a sudden, the sheep, the sheep will follow. You know, they, they, they agreed with him, so they went, and it's like, okay, you all went. You did your thing, but you expect a backlash. But then, on the same token, when somebody like the NASCAR guy quits because he doesn't like the flag, you know, he's he's uh, protesting the banning of the flags. Eh, so it's a couple days. Drew Brees is forced to apologize to backtrack. I mean, I had respect out the ass for Drew Brees. I really did. He was a, a community guy. Soft-spoken guy, but he got fired up on the football field. Hell of a football player. Great quarterback. Now you're a fucking pussy. Because you're afraid of your teammates. You're afraid of being looked at wrong in the public eye when you stood up for something. And, you know, the, I think the, what, what the excuse was was that words were taken out of context. I don't believe so. You said something that you meant, and then you realize, oh, crap, I might get some backlash for this. And you did. So you, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. And you're you're, fr you're probably friends with them. I get it. I didn't hear you say anything disparaging to, to the color of their skin. I didn't hear you say anything disparaging about anything about your, your players. All I heard you say was, I think, you know, I have pride in the military. Pride in the police, you know. That's all I heard when you said that. And even if you, it would have been total opposite of what, you know, you would have agreed with Colin Kaepernick 100%. I would have probably had more respect for you than you going back on what you say because you're afraid of a little heat. You know, you're you're cowardly. I I, I might say some dumb shit on here. I'm sure I'm going to get some flack for the kid not being a patriot. That's my opinion. I stand by it today. It's not like I was so mad that I said stuff like that. I was out of context. No, that, that I still hold true. I don't think he's a patriot. I think he defended himself. Um, unfortunately, two people died. And, you know, I see a lot of memes about, oh, well, this guy was a, you know, this guy was this, this guy was that, and they were criminals, and they, you know, so, this so happens they were these people that got shot. Do I feel bad about them being dead? N not really, to be honest. I mean, I don't want anybody to die over anything. I mean, if we could all be Highlanders and live forever, be awesome. For, for about everybody I know, but, they, they, you know, here we go again. Should I feel bad for everybody that dies, you know, because there's been a lot of people that died in these protests. You know, David Dorn was a policeman his whole life, retired, died in a riot. You didn't hear hardly shit about this guy. He was in, in because of protests of... Uh, he wasn't even, he wasn't even, he was retired, man. He'd served his time in the police department. It's like, oh man, but protest. Once again, I get back. Protest. Do it, but try to do it respectfully. I mean, just, why can't we do it peacefully? I mean, I understand people, the people's trigger is, well, we've tried that, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But burning down and shit and fighting and looting, looting and rioting, yeah, it brings more attention to the, the cause you're doing, but it makes you look bad. Because here you are burning down the things you're supposed to be defending. Your black black owned businesses. You know, um people getting shot and killed in these in these riots. It's look what happened in Chop. Chaz you know, Chop whatever, like in Seattle. Trying to make a stand saying, you know, we're going to be our own thing. We're going to do this. People died there. So it's like, your, your utopia is no utopia. 
it was, you know, and, and, and you know, a lot of people don't even know what I'm talking about. They're like, what, what are you talking about? Chop, jazz, whatever. Because it was there and gone. Failed experiment. And protesting is one thing. Threatening me is another. So when you come across with, you know, I got to raise my hand and protest. No, you're not threatening me. I'm not doing it. And I hope to God it never comes to a point where it's a decision I either cave or I'm, I'm going to meet physical bodily harm or death. But, you know, okay. I'm, I'm not going to protest something I don't believe needs to be protested in a certain way. I can go to a Black Lives Matter rally. I mean, I wouldn't because of the movement. But if it was just people saying that we're not Black Lives Matter, we're just... We're here to celebrate black lives. Celebrate, yeah, something like that. They had that kind of a rally. It wasn't Black Lives Matter, the movement. If it was, we're celebrating black lives today. And I went there. I would be with, I, I could stand there with you. But if you come up to me and say, you got to raise your hand in solidarity. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's not the way I protest. It's not the way I communicate. My way of communicating is talking. My way of communicating is memes on the internet. I don't feel the need to raise my hand in the air. I don't need, feel the need to uh, wear a face mask and carry a, a, an assault rifle on me. I don't feel the need to wave, you know, walking through town waving my flag. I have flags. I wave flags. Proudly I wave them. Because of what I believe in. It, whether it be Trump, the Punishers, the Confederate flag, whatever I want to wave. I do it at my own personal place. I don't take it out and wave it around. But if that's, if that's how you do it, that's how you do it. It's peaceful. If you're driving around with a Trump flag on your car, that's not, that's not violent. That's peaceful. You're protesting against the liberal, Democrat liberals. Or you're supporting Trump. I and mean, it can be a both dual-edged sword there. But the protesting idea, for, for especially I think it was more focused on these athletes that I was bashing yesterday. Do it. You got the, you got the millions of fans. You got the millions of followers on Twitter. You got all this stuff. Why do you have to do the extreme? You're making yourself look to me, it makes you it makes you look bad. And they say all these. I see a lot of people commenting that they're on your side. Oh, that's a great example. This is what we should be doing. You know, the, the sports shouldn't matter. Well, you didn't cancel the season. You didn't. You didn't call off the season without pay. You postponed it by a day. And, and maybe it was because people had it too much on their mind, couldn't play the game. I don't know. That wouldn't even fly with me because I got stuff on my mind every day and I got to go to work. I got to go to work and do do my job amidst uh, things in the, in the country that aren't going right. I know I'm not on a platform like an athlete and I don't mention celebrities anymore because I don't give a rat's ass what they say. I mean, until we find out what's going on in this pedophilia luciferian whatever i don't i don't trust any politician or celebrity that's into that shit so i don't know they could none of them be in it. hell you know that's what i mean we need to find out if we know we need to do something about it but if we if we're going to keep throwing accusations around that, that all these celebrities are in this stuff actors and politicians and rock stars and all this crap we need to find out I mean, we're worried about collusion with Russia and all this junk of spending millions of dollars on a report that comes back that nothing was there. Or we're spending money on the Wu flu or, or rebuilding cities after this senseless riots. And I already had somebody get on me about using the word senseless. 
They're not senseless, you know. They're not senseless. Yeah, some of them are. Any riot's senseless to me. Sorry. But this last round, <laughs> ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Should have never happened. Should have never been. None of the riots should have happened, but this one, the last one, you're not going to tell me that wasn't senseless. And there's people dead in that situation that it should have never happened. Just my opinion. And I'm, <laughs> that's all I can tell you is it's my opinion. And I don't expect you to love it. Um, but anyway, the protesting, I wanted to make it clear that I don't have a problem with athletes protesting. I just wish they wouldn't do it on their job. You know, during their job. And, and, and it is a job. You're getting paid a lot of money to play a game, but it's still your job. You still make... And I'm the idiot that buys your, your, your jerseys and buys tickets to the games and pays 10 bucks for a beer at a game because I want to go watch my, my beloved Cincinnati Reds. Or I want to go watch the Bengals and tailgate and spend $400 and buy every jersey, you know. I want to do that because I love sports and I love my teams. And But if, you know, you, I have to go to work to make that money. And I can't protest at my job, so why should you be able to allow to do it at your job and, and, and feel that that's A-OK? -okay? Do it off the clock. Do it off the clock. Don't get that shit politics involved in there. And I understand it's, this is a different deal. It's something we've never experienced before. I'm just saying I don't agree with it. Before and after the game, do whatever you want. Talk all the smack. During the game, play the game. I mean, I can't go to, I can't go to work with a yeah, you know, offensive face mask or offensive shit on my head. Hat, I mean. I can't go to work with that on there or I'll get in trouble. So if I if I if I go to work with a Nazi swastika face mask or Confederate flag face mask even. I mean, I wouldn't go with a Nazi. I'm just saying if, if a Nazi person that it is a white supremacist, if he wanted to wear that to work or out in public, that would be all bad for him. You know, it would be, you know, either one. But at work, I'm sure they would say something. You can't wear that here. And I guess the NBA and the NBA, you know, MLB and stuff, they allow them to wear Black Lives Matter shirts, warm-up shirts, and they allow...